Hi everyone, Paul Mann here, and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. In this video, we'll use Python to create a standalone app that can be used to encrypt other files. When I started encryption, I just wanted to encrypt a file on my computer to protect it. And there never seemed to be a straightforward, easy answer on how to do that. So now that's exactly what we're going to do here. We'll build on our prior encryption videos, but this time we'll make the file more portable. In other words, we'll be able to use it like a regular executable to encrypt files on your system or on similar systems on other computers. I'll start here with some simple code from the Python cryptography library that we used before. You can check out my video on how to encrypt files and strings with Python if you want a refresher on this syntax. In the example here, I'll add the encryption key to the actual code instead of reading it in from a key file or generating it randomly. I'm doing this so we have everything in one file. A more secure option obviously might be to generate the key each time and save it somewhere, but then we would have multiple files to manage and your key might get lost or compromised. And remember, in symmetric encryption it's all about the key, so we'll keep the key and the cipher together for now. I'll give some tips at the end of the video on how to keep the file itself secure. For now, we'll assign the key to the key variable in our code, and then we'll create two input statements to get some information from the user. We want to ask the user to give us the name of the file. This is much easier than hard coding the file into our code. Firstly, we'll ask the user for the name of the file they want to work with. And secondly, we'll ask if they want to encrypt or decrypt that file. Based on that feedback from the user, we can open up the file with the name they provided and created an if statement to encrypt it or decrypt it depending on their response. To open the file, we'll simply modify this text here. We can delete this and we'll put our two if statements here. The first condition will simply test to see if they want to encrypt the file by pressing the capital E as the response. If so, then we'll write the code in here to encrypt the file. To save the encrypted file, we'll use the file name that the user input and we'll append dot encrypted to it so we know that this is the encrypted version. And then we'll write that to the file. So the second condition will be looking for a capital D, uppercase D, to indicate that the user wants to decrypt the file and we'll use a similar code to process that. And finally, we'll put an else statement at the end just in case the user doesn't input a uppercase D or E. Classic Python mistake here, I put the if statement, I should have put the elif, um, otherwise all conditions will be tested. So for our test here, I'm going to use a sample file. I have text.text, .text. it's just uh, a text file with a basic sentence in it. And we'll run our program and we'll use that in our example here. So because the text.text .text is in the local directory, we don't need to put a path. We'll select the E. So we want to encrypt it. And when we hit enter, it runs. And now we have an extra file here called text.text .text encrypted. And as you can see, it's in byte format and it has been encrypted. So let's run it again. And this time we'll decrypt that file. So we'll put the text.text.encrypted .text and see if we can recover the contents of the file. Select D this time. And there you have this. The file name is getting very long, but the point is still made that the original file has been decrypted and the text has been recovered. Now we have a working program that allows us to encrypt and decrypt any file based on the input from the user. This will work fine here in PyCharm, but if we copy it outside of the PyCharm environment, it won't work because it doesn't have the cryptography library installed. So, for example, you could send this file to a friend, but you would have to tell him or her to install the cryptography library first in order for your code to work. In addition, they may not have the Python interpreter installed on their computer, or it may be an older version which could prevent your code from working. This doesn't make your program very portable, so instead we're going to compile the code to make it work without requiring Python or any additional libraries. In other words, we're going to make this a binary file. So when you want to encrypt the file, you simply go to the directory of that file, run your code, and the file will be encrypted. To compile the code, we're going to use another Python package called PyInstaller. PyInstaller bundles your code and all its dependencies into one package. It's really neat. Let's go back to our terminal in PyCharm and run the pip3 command to install PyInstaller. 
I did have issues installing PyInstaller with Python version 3.9, which is the latest version as of this recording. Changing to Python 3.8 or below seemed to fix the problem. This issue was only with PyInstaller, not with the code itself. Maybe the PyInstaller developers have not caught up with the latest version of Python yet, and the issue may very well be resolved by the time you're running this. But if not, just download an earlier version of Python and change the interpreter. When we do a directory listing in our terminal window, we see the toEncrypt.py file. This is the name of the file I use to put my code in here. Your file might be different, but you should see the file that you use to write the code in this directory. When installing PyInstaller with pip, it's best to use a sudo command so the package has the appropriate access. Pip is the original command that comes with Max and Python 2.7, which is a really older version, so I use pip3 to ensure that we're running the later version of Python. Probably really doesn't matter here because we're running in a virtual environment that PyCharm created, but I still use it out of habit. PyInstaller takes a minute to install, and after it has been successfully installed, we run PyInstaller with the name of the file that contains our code. PyInstaller creates a distribution for our code, but we only want one file for our distribution, so we'll put the one file parameter in front of PyInstaller so we're left with a single executable for our encryption. PyInstaller does its magic and compiles our code. Now when we do a directory listing, we see some new directories and files. The directory that we're interested in is called dist, D-I-S-T, and when we change to that directory, we'll see a single binary file with the same name as our Python file. We can run this file to verify. Unlike Windows, Macs and Linux need you to specify the directory the file is in even if you're in that directory. The dot slash specifies the current directory, which is where the file is. And there is our prompt, so we can assume the code is working. I don't want to encrypt anything here, so I'm going to cancel out of this. Now we want this file accessible from anywhere without having to specify the directory with the dot slash. So a quick tip here is to simply copy the file to a directory that's already in the system's path, rather than adding it to the path itself. The user local bin directory is in the Mac system path. So now this file will be accessible when we copy it here to anywhere on the computer. If you're running this in Windows, you probably copy to the C Windows directory, or if you prefer, you could add it to the environment variables in the system properties. This may require a reboot. So to test our file, I've created a directory on my desktop called encrypt, and I put a simple text file in there called secret.txt. I'm going to bring up the terminal window and navigate to that directory. Right now we're out of PyCharm, so we're in a different system. We're out of the virtual environment. So if we do an ls in that directory, we see just one file. We can cat the file to see that there's some text in it. When we run our file, our binary file, notice that the tab completion works now. The system knows where the file is because it's in our path. The file brings up a prompt for the name of the file to encrypt. We'll enter secret.txt and we'll select E to encrypt. Now when we do an ls, we see that the new file, secret.txt.encrypted. If we cat the original, it's still the same. And when we cat the .encrypted version, we see that the file is indeed encrypted. Now you can run this file from anywhere. You can even put an alias or a link on your desktop and run it directly from there. This is really convenient if you want to just encrypt something quickly. Now that we have the mechanics of the basic encryption down, we need to talk about the limitations and security of our binary file. First of all, the file will only work on systems similar to the one that the file was compiled on. So for example, if you use PyInstaller on a Mac to compile your file, it will only work on Macs. You need to compile it on Windows if you plan to share your program with Windows users. Secondly, our binary file has the encryption key in the file. If we cat the file here, we'll see that it is unreadable because it's in binary form. However, this is not a security control because the file can be decompiled and the key can be retrieved. We have to assume that anyone with access to our binary file can decrypt any of the files that were encrypted with it. I would suggest that you put the binary file on a USB drive. When the files are encrypted, you would remove the USB and store it somewhere safe. 
In all cases, if you lose the key with the file, the files that you encrypted with it will be irretrievable. This app could also be used as a means to send files securely over the internet to a trusted party. However, you would need to have a secure channel to share the binary file itself first. Then you could securely exchange sensitive files after that, with each party being able to encrypt and decrypt with the encryption app. Definitely advisable to update the file with a new key regularly in case the file gets compromised. So a little more work and you could improve it by generating random keys and having a process to associate each key with each encrypted file. Thanks again for watching my video and please don't forget to subscribe, share and like if you found this useful. Until the next time, take care.